Hello, in this video, we're briefly going to discuss surjective functions and do a very simple example. So let's start with the definition. A mapping, which let's call F, and let's use A and B from A to B. So A here is called the domain and B is called the codomain, is surjective. Another word for surjective is onto if for all y and b. So for every element in the codomain, there exists some element x in the domain a such that f of x is equal to y. And let me just briefly explain what this means intuitively, um, just so you see it. So if this is A, so this is called the domain, and this is B, this is called the codomain, and we have a function which takes elements from A and sends them to B, and that function is called F. It's also called a mapping. And we're saying it's surjective if the following happens. For all y and b, there exist x and a, such that f of x equals y. So what does that mean graphically? It means if I take a little element here, which I'll call y, so it doesn't matter which one I pick, I can pick any element in b. So for every single one, this has to be true. What this means is I can find some other element over here, which is called x, such that our function takes this element x and sends it to y. In other words, f of x is equal to y. And this has to be true for every single element y in b. So no matter which one you pick, you have to be able to find an element x that gets mapped there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do an example where we actually show a function is not surjective. And it's a pretty simple example, but it's instructive nonetheless. So example, and let's use this example. Let's let f be a function from the real numbers into the set of real numbers, b defined by, and let's look at f of x equals x squared. So this is just your typical function that you learn in math classes. Here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. And so if you look at the graph, it's just a parabola like this. It's a really easy graph. This is the graph of f of x equals x squared. So you can see here the range is um, going to be zero to infinity. It's all the possible y values. So when we define our function though, we define the codomain as the set of real numbers. So you can clearly see that if we pick a negative number, uh, negative numbers are in this set, we're not gonna be able to find x values that go to negative numbers from the graph or from the formula, right? x squared can't be equal to a negative number. So let's show that this is uh, not surjective. So let's just say claim f is not, let's switch up the language a little bit, a surjection, just change it up a little bit. Just different ways to say the same thing, or it's not onto, or it's not a surjective function. All right, so all we need to do is produce one element which violates the definition, because the definition says it has to work for all y. So all we have to do is produce one. And let's go with negative one, that's a simple example. We'll just say note, Negative one is an element in the set of real numbers. So I'm talking about this set here. This is your B, okay, this is your A. But there does not exist, right? You have to say there exists an X in, in the real numbers, but there does not exist X and R 
such that, st means such that, f of x, which is equal to x squared, which is equal to negative one. This is never true for any x. So f is not surjective. Just a simple example. So to violate the definition of a surjective function, uh, all you have to do is produce one value in the codomain where it fails. And in this case, we could have picked any negative number. You could have picked negative two, you could have picked negative pi. And the reason is for real numbers, whenever you have x squared, it's always going to be non-negative. In other words, it's going to be zero or it's going to be positive, but it can never be a negative number. The only way that would work is if we allowed uh, complex numbers, but we're not allowing those because our domain is the set of real numbers. Hopefully this video has taught you just maybe some mathematics, and if you've learned something, I think that's good. Until next time, good luck.